paying for. That's all they can no, do. Yeah, it's not a bank. It's a, it's just a, an individual here in our community that I know. Okay, yeah, a hard money lender, whoever it is. It really, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a bank or a yeah. loan shark. The same rules apply. Yeah. Okay. Because that's all banks are. They are loan sharks. <coughs> yeah. Exactly. Same rules apply. I don't care who it is. If they can't produce the origin, the, the obligation, the original document. Oh no! I already saw it. I went and I did that. Um, I don't know. Nine months ago, I went to his, the lawyer's office and saw the original note. Okay. And had it been materially altered? Was there stamps on it? Was there any writing on well, it? You know, I was just looking at the signatures. I hadn't heard about the stamps before, so I'll request to see it again. Um, but what if there's no stamps and it was just that he was, you know, scalping me for the 12% interest for 10 years? Well, 12% 12 interest, that's that's not criminal. Uh, you got to be up in, like, I think it's 70% 70, 70 or something like that. There's statutes on that for what a criminal interest rate is. And the interest rate's only infinity if you've gone through a lender who used your note to generate the credits to then loan back to you. So if you went to a hard lender uh, who actually loaned you his own money, um, yeah, you're, in a much, you're in a much tougher predicament. But if, he, uh, if, but if he has a solicitor, and it sounds like he does, obviously, then what you can do is you can request a, a buyout of the mortgage or, they have, or they have, have they already demanded an amount from you. Yeah, I mean, on this notice, it's asking for 10000 Okay, well, no, tell them you want to buy out the entire mortgage then, and you can pay them with a promissory note. Whoa. Do you know anybody that's done that? <laughs> uh, shit, not not offhand, but uh, I know people I that, that, have, that, have, that have attempted it. But the problem yeah, is... Yeah, I mean, this was another real estate. This is my home of 25 years. It's beautiful. I don't want to, like, play, you know, yeah. gamble with it. Well, I mean, that's the only solution I can offer that may help you. Other than that, unfortunately, um, if you've got a hard lender that actually loaned you assets that he can prove that were his own money, and that's why he's getting 12% interest, um, pay him. No, well, pay him, I, I don't have the money. But um, what I was hoping to do, Dean, as I said, was um, where he had done something I thought was illegal, contacting um, another party that he wasn't, uh, we didn't contract that he could contact anybody else then, other then than that, Then that's a lawsuit, and you'd have to prove damages if you think it damaged you in some way. Right, so then I wanted to negotiate because then it wouldn't be worth him worth him doing this just for three thousand dollars. That's a, oh yeah, absolutely. Then negotiate with him. Absolutely, that's administrative remedy negotiating with people. Right, that's what I'd plan to do, and I just wanted to run by you. But I want to get rid of the taxes because that's really the biggest amount. That's a se that's a separate issue. That's your problem. That your problems with the county. Yeah, so I'm I'll listen to what you um, said earlier. And your other material, but I just want to know anything that you'd said prior. Is it altered by my having this hard money lender? In the absolutely system? not. There's absolutely no way that a private mortgage can attach a tax liability to your property. Okay. And if they're claiming that it does, you ask you you get them to prove it. Burden of proof is on the accuser. If they're trying to say you that a, that that a private mortgage has attached a tax liability to your property. Then, at, then tell them to prove it. You prove that. And that's when you bring up that fee simple absolute point that I brought up there. Because taxes are a condition. Yeah, the Taxes fee are a condition of ownership that has nothing to do with that private mortgage. And if they're claiming that condition exists, then where did it come from? Because it's impossible. So that's a separate whole issue. So negotiate with the private mortgage lender and uh and and then takes the county to task on the property taxes two separate issues sounds like a good plan okay i'll let you know how it goes and if i have any questions may i contact you on those specific questions yeah absolutely the uh the the D dcd otcf uh, youtube uh account yeah the one that you spelled out for um yeah earlier okay yep. thank you yeah thank you so All right, much uh, good luck with that Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Angela. Night. You're welcome. Good night. Okay, moving right along. North and West Colorado. <gasps> North and West Colorado. North.
Beth. Is that you? Hi, Lindsay? I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I've been listening to this, and it's sort of changed my mind here because I have a traffic ticket, and I'm not commercial. And this is a, a speeding ticket, and in 65 years of driving or traveling, this is the first. This is the second ticket I ever had. Yep. And this is very strange because the the officer stopped me, and first he said I ran a red light, and I said no, I didn't. And he said, Oh, I smell alcohol. What have you been drinking? I said water. Well, he went round and round with that, got really obnoxious. One, no, if I'd take a breathalyzer, and I said no. So he asked me to get out of the car, which I did. He said he wanted to separate me from the car. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't smell of alcohol, <laughs> and he smelled of the car. And I said, well, I had a hot spiced lemon roasted chicken in there. He says, I smell alcohol. <laughs> I said, search the car. I don't care. We went on and on about you know, drugs and alcohol, and finally I just said, my yay means yay and my nay means nay, and I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Well, he dropped that. He gave me a speeding ticket, which was a a mile and three stoplights past where he stopped me. And then I didn't sign the ticket. (laughs) And he wrote, refused to sign. I said, well, I'll sign it, but I will put an honest sumset on it. All rights reserved. Well, it's too late. So anyway, the next day he came to my house with another You're thing. kidding. No. Now, this one is looks the same. It also says refused to sign, which, of course, he didn't offer to let me or not. And <laughs> it lowered the price and changed the statute. Now, I ended up sending them both back to him and to the court clerk so she'd know because I thought I don't want a contract with them. Well, this this is a... I live near a very small town and this... I ended up because I thought, well, they won't know that this is on appearance. So I went in as third-party intervener. But he sort of, and he said, this is just to plead. And I said, well, I can't possibly plead because I have a lot of questions. I don't, you know, I don't really have sufficient knowledge here. And so he ended up pleading for me. And I said, he pled not guilty. I said, isn't that practicing law from the bench? And he said, no, because we don't have a jail here. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I first thought of doing a claim against the officer. It was as if he had changed from, you know, Dr. Jekyll when he made the stop to Mr. Hyde when he brought the second one out. And he said he hated to to cost people money. Well, the reason... I'm fighting this, is it's a four-point ticket, and if you're over 65, which I am, um, they can raise your insurance 57% for three years, five years. You know, this is huge bucks. Now, what I was going to do was do an affidavit, challenge to the jurisdiction. Now, it's funny because the so-called trial is done by, well, I couldn't even find out. There's a real judge, and I had asked him, you know, and he wouldn't answer how I could get a fair trial because the town police is paid by the town. The judge is paid by the town. And then I tried to find out who the prosecutor was. Well, sometimes the prosecutor is the town council who lives in another town because this is just a little town either way they all they all work for the state and there's no injured party so unless you live unless you live in a communist nation they can't prosecute but what unless unless you live in a communist nation you can't they can't prosecute 
Okay, because interestingly enough, the, the suit is being bought by the state of Colorado on caps for the benefit and, I don't know what else the other word was, pleasure, of the town in caps. And so, I mean, they don't have a contract with me, but what do I do in a pleading? I want to do... You know, I mean, I tried to contact the the, um, the well, town council. He wouldn't talk to me. No, they, they don't care about that kind of stuff. Um, boy, they, they, I mean, well, there's there's eight different things you could do that I that I've gone over tonight. Uh, a lot of times, uh, a bunch of times already. But uh, you 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 bring up a new point that you could go over as well. And part of your uh, you're going to want to swear out an affidavit, exactly right. like what you said. Uh, don't bring up your relevant points like your conversation with the cop on the side of the road. That's completely irrelevant. The the, the problem is they don't have a contract with you. Right. So he, had, he had no jurisdiction to be giving you a ticket in the first place. I'd sue him for harassment personally as well, on top of everything else, uh, for well, harassing you when was, he pulled you over. He did, I mean, you know. He harassed you, plain and simple. But uh, right. some, some simple points you can bring up, number one, in your affidavit is the fact that the judge entered a plea for you. You never did. And he didn't have your authorization to do that. Number one. Number two, if you want to make the argument that uh, that, this, that the, the, the witnesses all work for the state, the prosecutor works for the state, the judge works for the state, everybody coming against you works for the state, and there's no injured party. Say, that kind of sounds like communism to me. And as far as I'm aware, I don't live in a communist nation. Okay, but now one of the things that, that I read, and I was wondering if I should go... Um, and accept the, the judge's oath because in California, I understand, and in Colorado, they do not recognize the injured party. Say that again? They do not recognize the idea of injured party. Injured party. So that uh, I, I don't even know what that means, actually. I don't know how you could not recognize the idea of an injured party. but uh, Well, you can't use it as a defense, apparently. Um, I, I don't know how that has any basis in law, period, but uh, it, then you can leave that alone and just ask for the contract then. At what point was I engaged in a contract with these people where I failed to perform? Because I'm not aware of any contractual obligation. You don't have to state with whom? Well, with, with, with the people that are bringing the claim against you. It's the state bringing the claim against you, right? The state, yeah. Of course. So standing, uh, having standing aside, where, where's the contract, right? At what point did you agree to conditional use of the roads that you own? Because issuing you a ticket would be a condition of the, of, uh, uh, that the state has the uh, apparent the authority to, uh, to, to, to give you a fine, right? Right. Well, no, you have the right to access the roads, right? You don't have a contract with those people. You no, I have a right to travel, and There's... I did bring that up with the officer, and he said, yes, you do. Great, you have agreement. Put that in your affidavit. Okay. Right, you have agreement of the parties now, so why are they bringing a claim against you? They agreed with you, you've got the right to access the roads, so why are they trying to put conditions on that right? Where did that come from? Put that in your affidavit. File that with a motion to dismiss. And also, although he he checked a little box that said, you know, from what, what nine to something miles over, he didn't fill in the part that said um, the actual speed of the vehicle um, or what the, the the speed limit was. Yeah, so feel free to state that in your affidavit, but the, the their technicalities, they're not that's no, not addressing the core issue. Doesn't matter. It's so he, he yeah, he's not he's not gonna listen to an argument like that. He doesn't care. Okay. So I don't even want to address any of that Stuff that see because he only submitted the second summons and complaint into the court, and I didn't know whether I wanted to to put all that other stuff in there. I, as little as possible. Only 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 attack the core issues. If you want to get into details, you do that when you're the plaintiff in a lawsuit against him for harassment. Oh, okay. All right. So. Yeah, you just want to attack the fact that number one, there's no injured party. Uh, bring it. A, no, I, I mean, that may be a statute of theirs, but you don't give a shit about their statutes. You can claim the maxim of law that no standing is given to one who is not injured. 
say exactly what statute of yours supersedes the maximum 